like I'm gonna be 34 this summer, and uh, chicken. I, yeah, I know, but you know, sometimes you, you go. I go to work with you know some guys that are like 21, 22, and and they're like right at the same par, like right at the same level as me, and um, so I feel like I'm just like like I'm playing catch up, like I'm like I'm trying to jump on things that I feel like I should have tackled a long time ago um and so like yeah i'm sitting there i'm like oh i should do a motion and stuff i don't really have like a good grasp on you know after effects and what that can do and so let me take a look at that figure that out and i should really be looking at you know doing web applications so i hit up tom too and i was like oh you're using react um for development you know any good tips and on you know where to look for learning that and it's like you're literally trying to yeah, learn Webflow, After Effects, and uh, what was the last one you just said? Oh my god! Uh, it's React, React. Yes, for like web yeah. applications. I'm like and, literally yeah, trying I'm to master like... three things all at once. And to me, that's like imagine mm. someone new in college having to learn Photoshop, InDesign, Audition, and Premiere all within like the same twelve week span. You know? Oh my god, that's overwhelming. Perspective Podcast is fuel for your mind and creative grind. Each week, we break down the art of healthy hustling, overcoming the inner critic, and growing your creative business. What's going on, folks? We have a big episode here today with the Spring 2021 Side Hustler Student Spotlight Special. It's going to be part one, broken down into a two-part series. And I can speak for everyone that we may have a little bit of nerves going into this one, but it's a good thing. And why I mentioned like nerves are a good thing, it's because you're not overconfident. You're still room to improve and prep and be prepared for things. And it's all about within this game that we're playing is training the butterflies to fly in formation. So butterflies are a good thing. So housekeeping, two things I want to note. One, your first draft of your uh, Instagram bio is due Thursday, tomorrow, and I will have a thread up again too. So, you know, just copy and paste whatever you have in your Instagram bio, just paste it over here too, and I will be monitoring it. And then um, the second assignment, or not the second thing, the second assignment is the guest expert call of Lisa Quine is this Thursday at 11.30 a.m. Central Time. So we move that. So I want to make sure I put that on your radar again. And I'm working with her on the side to get the topics locked down. But if you like the one with F dot, this will be like same kind of format. So with that being said, and without further ado, let's get into this right now with Nino Flores, the mushroom queen. Tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, why people should care. Give us that elevator pitch and let's dive into your struggle today. Hi, all. Um, my name is Nino and I'm an illustri- illustrator, designer and muralist from Honduras based in Nashville, Tennessee. I create colorful inspirational art focused on the themes of mindset, positivity, and spirituality. I express these topics through my love of mushroom art. My art is for those who are passionate about growth and self-development. And my hope is for someone to expand their mindset by letting go of mental barriers that stop them from living a fulfilling life. Nice. Nice. And you hear everybody's elevator pitch today. That was an assignment we just did. Sounded like a professional communicating what you do with confidence and the value you provide this world. So loving it so far. Way to kick us off. Um, What's on your mind today? What kind of struggle do you want to tackle or um, what kind of topic you want to talk about? Uh, Well, I hear you about like the butterflies because now I'm feeling them. (laughs) I was so confident before. Like, "Ah, I got this. But um, I want to talk about how I am so pro like changing our mindset and I have a little story to share about a moment where I actually experienced some toxic positivity and it's something that I preach against a lot so this is a story how I kind of experienced some growth on my side wow the the nerves are hitting me this is actually not an easy conversation to have but um Last week, uh, a friend of mine on Instagram, they were talking about how they were struggling and didn't see value in their work. And my first reaction was to let them know, like, hey, uh, I urge you to change your mentality. Uh, you are you bring so much value. Your art brings so much value. So please change that mindset, my friend. And um, 
that actually did the opposite of my intentions. It actually triggered them because of the words um, urge to change mentality. And um, that is actually the opposite of what I intend to do. So uh, after letting me know their side of the story and what they were struggling with, it made me realize that I need to listen more. Um, and I feel like now I know how to approach a situation. Actually, I feel like saying things like shifting your mindset aligns better with my mission. Um, so that's something I want to do more with my work. I aspire to be um, an influencer and a positive one. And I hope to inspire people to also shine brighter than me if possible. So through my art, I aspire to do those things. Well, and I know we had been talking on the side too. <clears throat> We're wired natural helpers. You know, that's the mask we wear. We wear the helping mask, aka why I'm into coaching. And that gets me in trouble with wifey. You know, I'm always in help mode when really she's like, I just need you to listen. And I think that's like the biggest skill set or the biggest learning lesson is listening and empathy. And we talked about mm -hmm. instead of going into it, be like, hey, I urge you to do this, or hey, you should try this or this or this from the helping standpoint. Let's speak more from experiences like anecdotal evidence of maybe a similar time that you can parallel maybe what they're going through and be like, oh, maybe I don't fully understand, but here's a rough time that I went through. You know, it sucks. And it's okay to feel like shit sometimes. Like it's, it's okay. You know, we're human beings at the end of the day. And I know for all of us, like the last thing we do is toxic positivity here. We got to feel the feelings and let it ride it out, you know, instead of just like burying it all with inside and letting it self-sabotage you. So I think, the growth you're having from it is massive, you know, and how are you like putting that into your work moving forward? Um, I feel like now I can come from like a place of radical empathy rather than just, um, this is my purpose and this is what I want to do. Like I want it to be deeper than that. Um, so yeah, I hope that answers that. <laughs> and, and we got to watch out for unsolicited advice too. That's where it also got me yes. in trouble. You know, what did you yes. tell me kind of about that? Um, I, wow, it's, it's, I don't remember right now, but like, I know that I'm a type two Instagram and we are like helpers. So I think that moving forward, if people come to me, I'm happy to help. I'm going to keep putting my message out. And if like it resonates with anybody, great. Um, but sometimes people have to do the inner work and sometimes you kind of have to learn from experience too. So right. Yeah. That's where I'm coming we from. We got to watch from just like shooting from the hip and be like, Hey, I urge and I compel you. And I may not be empathizing with you or listening to you first. So I'm just offering unsolicited advice, man. I've gotten myself into trouble yes. so many times. Hence <laughs> why with students, I'm like, Hey, I'm an over communicator. I need you to tell me exactly what you need. Cause I'm going to go right into help mode. Unless you tell me like, yo, I just need to like, listen, I need a creative therapy event session. I just need a friend. So um, yes. that's, that's me. That's, you know, I, I totally understand uh, where you're coming from with that. Anything else you kind of want to add on top of that or a struggle that you want to work on or something else you want to know? Um, this week has been pretty good. I feel like finally, like we're in the middle of the program and I feel more focused. I know like where my project stands, like my deadline. What is your project by the um, way too? And I want all the students to kind of have like a, a, um, their project in mind. So I am making a calendar with um, a mushroom theme and kind of like a message to positivity, but not just like your regular, like you can do this or just like empty words. Um, they're actually connected with like where my spiritual journey is going. So for example, have a piece where it talks about not having uh, limiting thoughts and uh, to embrace the slow growth because these are actually topics that I've been experiencing every week. So I feel like every week that I've been creating an art piece, it has to do with something that I'm experiencing that week. So it's been like a great experience for me to share basically my journey in this program through this calendar. Right. So someone listening to this later on in the year, where can they find this calendar at? Or at least through your um, work. Find oh, it. I'll, I'll be sure to plug everybody's handles and stuff, but like, <laughs> where's someone going to be able to find this? So uh, you'll be able to find the pieces on my Instagram, which is uh, at Nino C. Flores, and they'll be available on my Etsy shop, uh, which is Prison Paper Press. Prison Paper Press. Did I say Etsy shop? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything else you want to sprinkle on top of this? I feel like this is 
a good experience, a learning experience. And I appreciate like the vulnerability yes. and transparency. Being, and and I, I told students before we came on, if you're listening right now, nobody wants to hear you have it all figured out. Like, that's not what this program is to be like, oh my gosh, I figured it all out six weeks into the program. And now I'm a master at my craft. It's bigger than that. You know, we're dealing with hurdles every day within this program. We're all, we're kicking ass, but then another day we'll have a setback. We're fighting comparison trap. We're fighting imposter syndrome. We're fighting burnout, you know? So that's the beauty of this program is that we're struggling on a path together toward a bigger picture. Anything else you want to add on? I don't want to cut you off. Awesome. No, you're all good. Thank you. I appreciate your uh, courage of going first today. Much love to you, Nino. Thank you. Thank all right. You. Next up, we got Brennan Gilbert. Hey, man. How's it going? Fantastic. How you doing, brother? Good. Um, yeah, so I'm Brennan. I'm an experimental designer focused on good humor, design, direction, and illustration. Um, and so in this new part of my career and focusing on my artwork, I'm really aiming to create artwork designed to inspire, motivate, amuse, and educate. Got that cadence from you, Scotty, with those little punchy lines. Yeah. Uh, my work is for anyone. <laughs> my work is for anyone who needs the occasional reminder that it'll all be okay, myself included, uh, as well as to reignite my own creative passions. Uh, and on one end, I want to help break down serious stigmas. Uh, and on the other hand, I want to provide a simple visual break in someone's day. Nice. And before I forgot to flex on Nino's work real quick. So if you're watching the video, I'm going to just do a quick little brief intro to Nino's work. <clears throat> and then I'm going to pop up Brennan on the screen too. So people can get a feel all the mushrooms. Nino really went deep this year. You know, we worked it out and be like, yo, let's, let's go all in on the world of mushrooms and get uncomfortable with it. So next let's flex on Brennan. And she's owning it and really finding her uh, niche in the communities with it too. So all right. You want to talk a little bit about your work? You've been posting a new one today. Yeah. So I've been posting weekly and, you know, this is all about exploration for me and experimentation. Uh, Scotty, you and I have talked about, I've never identified as an artist before, even though it is something that I'm passionate about, something I love. Uh, I've always had kind of the safe day jobs in the world of design. And so this environment with Instagram is purely just to experiment, test stuff out. So, and speak uh, with towards this, the difficulty of that, of letting go of the previous identity yeah. and reinventing yourself, because that's a powerful thing to talk about. Yeah, and <laughs> I, I mean, that's kind of my topic for this week. I don't, I don't know, right? Like, I still feel like I haven't picked a lane, um, and so I'm loving these experiments with the design artwork. And at the same time, I think daily, I have these conflicts of, do I want to optimize for my career? Do I want to optimize for the day job? Do I want to go freelance? Do I want to work on artwork? Do I want to learn Blender, right? Like all these different things are just constantly moving around in my head. And it is, it's, it's been extremely difficult for me to pick a lane and stick with it. But I've done five weeks in a row now with, with this theme on Instagram and that's been a huge win. Thank you. Right. And I feel like we keep coming back like, hey, you come from the corporate world like I did. ROIs, ROIs. How do we have measurable end results with this? Right. You know, talk about that struggle of letting go, hiring your inner child with intentional, purposeful play. Yeah. I mean, I think we talk about it in some form or another every single week because it is, it's hard. I mean, I'm, I'm going on 10, 15 years of doing design for my day job in kind of the corporate world. Uh, it is in startups, but you know, at the end of the day, it's still B2B businesses focusing on things like ROI. So uh, to really listen to that inner child and just make stuff that I think is cool for the sake of it being cool or fun uh, it's, it's been tough. And I think, you know, I I'm so used to getting a pat on the back when I do stuff that works at work, that when I do this and say, I don't get as many likes as the last time it, it feels a little discouraging and it's hard not to just go back to what I know and what I'm comfortable 
and what feels safe to do to just kind of get that uh, external gratification. So how have you been navigating this? You know, where does the intentionality come with the purposeful play again? You know, wrapping in, we really talked about your secret sauce and how I feel like you have that superpower of like mentorship in a sense through storytelling and experiences. You know, so while this is hiring yeah. a child for the fun, you're also like honestly pretty strategic and intentional with what you're doing. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's just working through this program to find the right balance of those two different things. You know, I, I am not a person who just, you know, wants to waste my time and throw stuff away at the end of the day. I do have intentionality behind what I'm working on. And so it's less focus on one and not the other and more focus on how do I, you know, make those different parts of my life really work together and yeah, we had had a conversation a few weeks ago, just kind of playing to my strengths. And it is topics like mentorship and education. And, uh, you know, I want to get some humor stuff back into my work. The first few pieces have been on the heavier side. And I want to touch on that stuff. But I also want to pepper in, you know, I, I do like The Simpsons. I do like stupid dad jokes. I like all that stuff as well. And so I want to just be my uh, holistic, healthy self with all the work that I'm doing and, and make sure that I'm able to, you know, put that out into the world. So in terms of like future moves, where could you see this evolving into say a year from now, knowing that <clears throat> things can change and you're going to evolve, but just so people, you know, from a year from now, they be like, wow, I'm going to go back and see what his work is like. Yeah. Um, you know, if I'm just sticking to stick with what's been working and where I've been finding joy, uh, and not going down the traditional paths of what I'm used to of like, oh, throw this on a t-shirt or, you know, make something just quick for a quick buck. Uh, I had found, I'll, I'll have to look him up, but I found a recent Instagram account where this guy just makes really, really weird 3D art. And I'm like, there's no way that this is ever like a thing, like a profitable thing. And it's not people because everyone knows people. So it's a different guy. But he ended up working for like Netflix and working on Stranger Things and working on video games. And I think it's because he just, you know, he does do daily artworks, but that's where I see myself going. It's like, if I can just stick with the artwork of it and stick with the fun part, I think the, the business side, the monetization, all that stuff will come in due time. Um, and I think, you know, it's amazing what kind of appetites people have in the real world for all kinds of creativity and not just kind of your stereotypical standard stuff. Right. And I think that's what I'm enjoying most about yours is it's not the stereotypical standard stuff. And that's the power of showing yourself in your work. You know, to me, that's the biggest way to stand out from the noise is by just breathing your existence into it, your unique thumbprint, which I feel like you're crushing yeah. right now. So I know like no, in the thanks, first couple man. of weeks, you're like, you know, this is weird, but I know I feel like you've really found your groove regardless if one piece gets more likes than the other, you know, now you're dipping yeah. into like the educational format of things too. Yeah. Yeah. It's been great. It's been a, a, <laughs> a difficult, but enjoyable learning process for sure. And I'm looking forward to uh, continuing. What would you say is the biggest takeaway you've gotten so far in terms of your own personal growth and transformation in the first six weeks? Uh, you know, it's that same theme. It's as much as I have felt uncomfortable just putting out stuff that I vibe with and stuff that I think is cool. Uh, yeah, it's not defaulting to like, oh, that thing tanked by all these other metrics, like switch it back to like, you know, do do a illustrated vector thing that I, I can whip out in 10 seconds. But yeah, really sticking with the uncomfortability of of doing kind of random weird artwork that I've never really focused on before, but I have really enjoyed it. Well, cool. Anything else you want to uh, sprinkle on the top or anything else you want to mention or talk about? No, I mean, I just appreciate the opportunity and I'm excited to uh, continue this exploration. Uh, and last thing, let them know how this all happened. The serendipitous synchronicity. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, it was weird. It was really weird. I I was applying to a new job. <clears throat> I had gotten through, you know, a lot of that. I was pretty stoked. I also wasn't sure if I wanted to leave my current thing. It was very career-minded. And then stuff didn't end up working out, and I was super bummed. 
Um, and I realized I just felt stuck all the way around. And I had been on Scotty's uh, newsletters and this program was being advertised and I had missed the official deadline by like two, three days. Same. And I found myself still, days, yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't much. And I found myself still thinking about it. And I thought about it a lot, a lot, a lot. And I'm like, you know, he seems like a cool guy. I'll just shoot him a note and be like, I respect timelines, but this is my situation. Is there any room? And Scotty ba got back to me and said there was one spot left. So yeah, it was definitely destiny. And uh, uh, I'm glad I found myself here instead of something else that probably would have just stressed me out further in my life. Right. It's so dope, man. That's, that's the power of this. It's like, I was going into this with 11 spots. I was just going to roll with 11 this time. not going to force it. And then all of a sudden you land on my plate. I'm like, okay, let's get on a call. Yeah. And then you join like literally the day before the program started. So yeah, you were meant to be here, man. Cool. Thanks, man. Appreciate, I appreciate it. you, Brennan. Thank you. Uh, next we got Mr. Andy Brown looking freshly quaffed over there with that fresh haircut. <laughs> Yeah, I finally got a haircut first time since uh, September. So, uh, yeah, my name's Andy. I'm a uh, creative developer in Buffalo, New York. I design and develop websites, um, try and focus on motion and interaction design and uh, help with, you know, user experience um, through motion and, you know, site interactions. Um, uh, my work is for, you know, any creative brand that wants to stand out and lean into the weird on the internet and uh, do something unexpected with their presence online. And, you know, they can do that. Um, and, you know, I can help them communicate their unique style and voice to their ideal audience and uh, clientele. And if you could, I would love for you to like talk a little bit about where you were <laughs> six weeks ago coming into the program. Versus like where you are now. Um, six weeks into the pro or six weeks ago, uh, I had never posted any of my work online ever. Um, or at least, you know, put my name on it. Um, it's all out there online. But, um, you know, really just trying to put stuff out there that I was really like proud of. Um, and there had been some things in the past, but I was just never brave enough to... Uh, you know, I actually put my name on there um, just for fear of judgment and, uh, you know, you know, imposter syndrome, all that. What uh, were you afraid of in terms of judgment? Oh, uh, you know, being a developer, it's, you know, a lot of people can just, you can jump in and see exactly how things are done and nitpick away at all the little details and pick out mistakes and, and whatnot. So, um, I've just always been, you know, kind of hesitant to, you know, share that work out there to the world. Um, and but, if you're like, people um, might not take of, you seriously. Yeah. You know, uh, it's like, okay, you made something cool and it looks nice, but you, you didn't do it the right way. And it was, you know, it looks like you just like hacked this together and, and all that. So it's, it's judgment on like the technical side as well as the, you know, the style and design. Um, but, you know, I've learned to just stop caring about that so much and just, you know, that I'm in my own head more than anything else. And um, What would you, you say, know, fast forward six weeks now, it. what have you been learning about yourself? What's been working for you? Um, really just not thinking too much about you know, I'm at that point now I'm looking, I'm looking onto the next thing. I'm like, all right, what's next? What can I put out there next? What can I do next? Um, you know, I'm not even like, I put out a post today and don't even think about it. I'm like already onto the next thing. So I'm, I'm past that fear of, you know, putting things out there and putting my name on it and, you know, showing myself and my work. Um, I actually just had, you know, I was really afraid of, you know, my like coworkers finding it and I had a coworker find it and, I was like, oh God, I wonder what they're going to say. And they loved it. They're like, wow, this stuff is awesome. This stuff is great. So uh, it's been pretty, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm just mad I waited so long to do it. Um, and, you know, luckily, you know, we're here and, you know, pushing on through together. So talk about, before I talk about like what you, you mentioned, something powerful, feeling like you got a late start, <clears throat> but I would also like you before mm -hmm. I pivot to that, talk about. Um, what you found worked for you in terms of your time management 
in attacking a project for X amount of time, what method and technique you yeah. use? Yeah, I, uh, you know, I find it, you know, I sit and I work all the time, um, but I find it hard to like stay like super, like like focused on one thing at a time. So yeah, I've just been doing the, uh, is it the Panam, I'm gonna Pomodoro. butcher the name of it. Pomodoro, there we go. Um, yeah, just two hour blocks. I just set aside two hour blocks for myself. Uh, take like three breaks in between. Um, you know, usually try and do it like once every like 40 minutes or half hour, 40 minutes, just take a break, stand up, walk away, go get a drink of water or something like that. Um, and I turn off my phone, I do everything and just focus on one thing. I don't even like search for other things online because I've got, you know, that ADHD out the, out the wazoo when it comes to, you know, going down rabbit holes when you just look, you're trying to find one thing and it, you know, three hours later, you forgot what you're even working on. So, but it's really helped me keep focused, stay on track uh, and, and just keep, keep moving forward. And it's, it's been a game changer. And I think that's the big thing is like within the beginning first four weeks, you know, of this program, it's all about figuring out what processes, systems, you know, techniques work for you mm -hmm. and what doesn't work, you know, cause there's no one size fits all for everything. I don't leverage the Pomodoro method, but you do. And you've been having great success with it. And you, you mentioned something like super powerful in our conversations today. Um, and yesterday based on your check-in feeling overwhelmed, taking on too much. And then mm -hmm. in our conversation, you're like, yo, I just feel so far behind, you know, tell people how old you are and why you feel so behind and why you're taking so much on right away. I feel like dude, because there's so many people I guarantee feel the same way and hearing you being like yo i just started existing i started posting weekly and just not caring anymore like that's what some people need to hear right now yeah it's never too late to start yeah, yeah no like um like i'm gonna be 34 this summer and Sweet uh chicken walk, walk. I, yeah i know but you know sometimes you, you go i go to work with you know some guys that are like 21, 22 and, and they're like right at the same par, like right at the same level as me. And, um, so I feel like I'm just like, like I'm playing catch up. Like I'm like, I'm trying to jump on things that I feel like I should have tackled a long time ago. Um, and so like, yeah, I'm sitting there, I'm like, Oh, I should do emotion and stuff. I don't really have like a good grasp on, you know, after effects and what that can do. And so let me take a look at that and figure that out. And I should really be looking at, you know, doing web applications. So I hit up Tom too. And I was like, oh, you're using React um, for development. You know, any good tips and on, you know, where to look for learning that. It's like, you're literally trying to yeah, learn Webflow, After Effects. And uh, what was the last one you just said? Oh my God. Uh, it's React, React. Yes, for like web yeah. applications. And, like literally yeah, trying to master like, three things all at once. And to me, that's like, imagine mm -hmm. someone new in college having to learn photoshop InDesign, audition and premiere all within like the same 12 week span you know oh my god that's overwhelming no wonder why you're yeah. overwhelmed yeah i feel like i finally have this like fire under my ass so um <clears throat> i'm just like all out but i gotta step back and take things one thing at a time and you know enjoy the process of everything so currently you feel like you got a good grasp on Webflow. So the next thing to weave in there would probably be After Effects first and then, you know, uh, putting like React. Like, And I told him, imagine yourself at the end of the year and you're just like a fucking boss with React, mm. After Effects, and Webflow. And you learned those big three things in a year. Like me, I was like, yo, I encourage people like learn one new skill each year. And like, because I'm playing the long game, the slow and steady grind. If we can all master one new skill each year, like, and if you can put together three in a year, like you're setting the tone, plus your path is different. You know, they may have had different advantages than you or me at a younger age, but you have different targets than them, you know, right. eventually like use that as fuel, but also compete with yourself at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I just keep telling myself, like, I have that feeling come over. It's like, how can I push this? How can I push this? How can I push this further? And I just got to, you know take it as it comes and not kill myself with it. So where do you see yourself by the end of this program? At the end of the 12 weeks, what do you have planned or going to have done? In the uh, 
I plan to finally have my own website out there um, with some pieces of work that, you know, will actually be living out there in the real world. Um, so instead of just, you know, some Instagram posts, which I'm, you know, I'm proud of, but, you know, I build websites, they're not real websites yet. So um, that's going to be the goal um, by the end of this. I have my own website with some, you know, at least three pieces of work up there. Which will be a huge deal. All mm-hmm. of work you're proud of. And then imagine where you're going to be at the end of 2021, which by the end of this program, all of us will have our next targets for the end of the year, you know, because I don't want to just like, here you go. You're, you're in the real world now. What are you going to do? So um, anything else you want to add to it? Like, thank you for opening up, letting me put you on the spot with some of these things. No, that's it. I'm just still, yeah, just, just cranking away. So no, glad to be here. You're doing a great job. Appreciate your presence, man. Thanks. All right. We got Danielle Duran, AKA Laker fan. <laughs> Hi guys. Um, all right. So let's get started. Um, I'm Danielle. I'm a creative spirit from the LBC. Um, I like to illustrate design and also art direct. Um, I create super colorful and inspirational illustrations of people and plants. Um, My work is for those that want a different perspective or need a smile to brighten up their day. Um, That way they can spread joy to others around them. And one thing for you, Mm -hmm. let me add, let me get this up here. Going into this, you know, your designer, designer, art director world. And at the end of the day, you know, kind of speak toward what are you really, truly, the essence of your spirit? Right now it's Fancy Dan Dan. I'm not gonna lie, I've been meaning to tell you this. I feel like (laughs) we need to update your Instagram handle sometime soon too. Say like Danny, the illustrator, Danielle, the illustrator, but, you know, kind of talk about this journey you've been on, um, maybe at the beginning of the year to like six weeks into this program. You know, we've been needing to like really give yourself some grace and permission to like not have it all figured out. Yeah, for sure. I think, um, especially with COVID, I kind of picked up, illustrating a little bit more. I used to illustrate um, kind of a couple years ago and then I kind of just like fell off, um, got super um, into just like working in advertising. And after being stuck at home, like I needed some creative outlet instead of just working on day work stuff. And so picked up my old iPad and just started drawing and I really discovered the love to draw again. and kind of just, I'm still kind of figuring out my style, but like, it's something that I'm pretty passionate about and kind of see a future for myself doing as long as I can, can continue to figure out who I am as an artist. Um, Cause I've been a commercial artist forever and having a fr- main uh, a, a mind frame of basically creating work for everybody. Now I'm more creating work for myself and who I want to create work for, so. It's a different mindset. It's kind of tricky too, because you get into your head a lot (laughs) of like, am I worth this? Can I do this? Am I good enough? So uh, yeah. What are some of the hard lessons you've had? uh, (laughs) Well, for me, it's been a lot about kind of self-discovery. Um, I haven't really been able to kind of really go in deep and think about the things that are important to me and like what I want to like break free from. I have a lot of comparison issues. Um, I have a lot of fear. Like every time I write in my journal, it's always about fear of not doing something or fear of not uh, being as good as somebody else. And so those are kind of my inner struggles. And I feel like even doing advertising right like we're always comparing ourselves to other companies and we can do better work and come up with better ideas so it's kind of scaling it back and just going back to my core values of like who I am and like what I want to create for who would you say you are I'm still figuring that out what about during this season as of today who have you found yourself to be I feel like I've found that I'm more confident than I perceive myself to be. Um, I tend to hide a lot, like being on video. I don't like to do that a lot, but this class, you know, uh, being around all you guys has made me feel a little bit more comfortable doing that. Um, I don't know. 
it's it's interesting because I feel like this this class has really challenged me to really dive deep and get into the nitty gritty of like why are you like this? Why are you lazy? Why do you want to do this? Just to, just to clarify, <laughs> I never said that to you. <laughs> uh, no, I, no, you didn't. Okay. No, I didn't. No, but those are the type of things that like go in my head. Like it, it goes down to like um, basically motiv- motivating myself to continue to work on my craft. Um, even when I have like physical constraints or anything like that. Um, I've also been dealing with the fact of like not finding a lot of value in my day job and finding more value in working on concepting and ideation for the side hustle. And so kind of balancing that has been kind of hard for me personally, because to stay motivated in my day job. And like you said, being grateful for the position that I am, I am very grateful. Um, but I think it's also taking a step back at like, what are my priorities? And I think your post today too on your stories um, really resonated with me about putting energy in the right places and what's important to you. So I think working on that as well uh, will help me balance out my kind of insecurities or you know troubles, I should say. Well, and to me, I feel like I mentioned this multiple times, but your superpower that I feel is just like lurking, you know, a lurking creative genius behind the scenes <clears throat> isn't necessarily your illustration skills. Like, damn, you're really good with illustration, but your storytelling, when you like crack open the shell and get a little vulnerable, I'm like, whoa, that shit just hits different. <laughs> like I'll, I'll share. Yeah. The first time we had a conversation before our discovery call, I read one of your posts and it had me bawling. <laughs> you know, right before we jumped on a call, I'm like, why the hell did I read this post right before we got on a call? It just caught me off guard, like literally a couple minutes beforehand. And I'm like, wow, like you got something here. And I think that's by the end of the day, by the end of this program or by the end of this year, I really want to push you to get out of your own way more mm-hmm. and like continue to step into the vulnerable moments because that's where the true growth is. And I think that's where your power is of writing, storytelling, and then we need to get your face out there. So moving forward, when's your next piece? Hopefully this week. I'm wait, still working wait. on it. What's the yes, language? this week. This week, for sure. Um, you don't say try and hope in this program. <laughs> no, no. The mindset shift, so. Um, Thursday. <clears throat> when? Thursday. Thursday? Mm-hmm. Would you do me a favor? Mm-hmm. All right, I'm putting you on the spot here. But we're all going to hold you accountable. Once you get that post out there, go on your stories be like, hey, new post, check out this dope illustration. And then like get on your face and then just talk about your illustration. <laughs> just let it rip for like three stories, you know, so 15 seconds, 15 seconds and 15 seconds. Okay. You got this. And here's the beauty of this and why I'm pushing all of you to do this early. So when we don't have big audiences early on, <clears throat> it makes it so much easier to suck. You know, you're not throwing mm-hmm. yourself into the fire years down the road when you got a big ass audience built you can figure it out now. Not many people are going to see right away. So it's easier for you to work through it. That's the power of this. So like someone like Andrew, I'm going to give you this call to action as well. Brennan and, you know, now it's time. It's time to really step into this. And I want all of us, this is the big call to action to everyone this week. And yeah. So call to action to you action item. I mean, once you post it, your latest Mm -hmm. drawing or your latest illustration, let us know in the DM Slack chat or the DM messenger chat. Mm-hmm. that way we can all go and check it out and go check out your stories and show you some love okay yeah. <laughs> that's very nerve-wracking but good okay <laughs> whatever makes you super nervous that's what we tackle in this program yeah so that's the next level of growth cool anything else you want to add on top of this no not right now okay thank you for your honesty mm-hmm. and you are an illustrator and you're a badass illustrator storyteller and a great writer so thank you thank for being you. a part of this Yes, thank you. Next up, Isaac unfortunately cannot be here today. I'm not going to spill the beans. By the time this comes out, the world will know. But um, we'll find a way to get Isaac's name and word and artwork out there. So I'll make sure to talk about that in the intro and outro. But next, we got Christina. Hi, Scotty. And hi, fam. Um, okay. Uh trying to loosen up the nerves over here Um, over here yeah (laughs) okay so i'm christina um i'm an illustrator letterer and 
creator of the small ego, which is the portal to all my passion projects. Um, I create uh, both retro and um, vintage inspired artwork um, that is both nostalgic, um, but also has a deep undertone to it. Um, my work is for those who want to dig deep, question their reality and expand their imagination. And my purpose is to provoke a feeling like any feeling, um, whether it is joy or discomfort to me, feeling our feelings is the like the recipe to healing and a happy life. So yeah, it's just whatever I feel like creating um, and what I'm going through uh, in the in like my current life, I like to just express that with my work. No, and speak a little bit toward where you were at the beginning of the program to where you are now. I guess I'm putting everybody on the spot with that. Yeah, so beginning of the program, um, very confused, uh, having lack of clarity and the direction of where I'm going with a lot of my work. Um, I've always kind of been that way. Um, I've been a designer since like for over almost 10 years now. Um, and 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 pursuing like my illustration for at least professionally for six, seven years. Um, but I always just kind of like have held myself back um, out of like fear, out of judgment, fear of judgment, just in general. Like I, I've always just been like creating excuses for myself, like, oh, well, I'm not perfect or I'm not ready yet. Or like subconsciously I've held myself back and because of like not having clarity on like my path or my intentions behind my work and what I want to um, succeed in with it. I think I just kind of would, you know, like cower back and just not take any action and just paralyze myself. And I was just, I've been going through that cycle every year, every year I'll start and I'm like, okay, this year will be different. Like, I'm going to finally do it. I'm just going to post what I want to post and just go with it. And this year, it just really hit hard, um, especially after like 2020 being as crazy as it was. And going into 2021, I was like, you know what, like my head is like, I need to get my head in the game and just really, really start paving my future. And um, yeah, so fast forward up until now, I, I just feel like so much more, um, just like less afraid of, of being my like true authentic artistic self. And, um, like, especially with the guidance of this group, it's helped me so much. I just thrive a lot better with people, um, rather than alone. So just having that, um, support, especially from you, Scotty and all of you, and just going with it. I feel like a completely different person at this point like it, it's just kind of like it's crazy to think back um on our first call and I also was one of the last ones to join um I kept seeing your emails come in and I would contemplate it and finally one Sunday evening it was like right before the deadline I was like you know what I'm just gonna like I'm just gonna apply why not let's just put it out there we'll see what happens and I'm really glad I did yeah yeah, I would say you're on fire right now. You're really finding your groove, especially secret sauce wise, like the truck series, retro trucks, that was dope. It's part of your secret sauce. But now you're like really getting into the the groovy awakening part. Um, what's kind of yes. like the big struggle that you would ask me about on check-in? Yeah, so my biggest struggle and hurdle um, definitely comes down to confidence and speaking, um, speaking up or just expressing myself, I guess. Um, I just have this tendency to like feel a really intense regret after I post anything, whether it's like, especially if it's vulnerable, I just get so <clears throat> wrapped up in like, oh my God, I can't believe I just posted this. Like, what the hell am I thinking? Like, people are going to think I'm this like crazy, like know-it-all. Like, why am I even, tr like, I'm not even old enough to be like giving anyone advice about life. Like there's, I just, all these thoughts come in and, and it just kind of like paralyzes me. Like, oh my God, everyone's going to follow me. People are going to stop talking to me. They're going to stop liking my work. And it just kind of spirals down in this like hole um, of 
definitely recovering people pleaser um, antics, I would say. So I know, like, I logically understand where it's coming from and what it is, but it's just, that's one of my biggest hurdles is confidence for sure. And just owning my shit and, and like really just really believing in myself. That's been my biggest thing. I'm always in the way of my own self. (laughs) Yeah. And you would ask me, how did I build up my confidence in order to be able to speak and express myself so well? Sure. It wasn't a walk in the park for you either, especially at first. And I'd love to hear how you handle that. Um, I feel like you said a lot and you clearly are like overcoming a lot of it by just throwing yourself in the fire. So some notes that I had for tonight, confidence comes by consistently showing up and pushing your comfort zones. All right. You're, it's hard to be confident when you just like passively exist, living in fear, letting fear dictate your decisions or lack of decision-making and action taking. So I talk about, it's all about normalizing an uncomfortable task and leaning into the fear and the unease. So what you're currently doing right now, like, oh my God, here's a vulnerable post. I need to lean into it. And I think you even messed it's like you had great response back to it. And um, let's see, showing your face more. I really want to get you to show your face more. You even told me I tried getting you, uh, bugging you to jump on my clubhouse session sometime. And you know, it, meant, it made you a little nervous, which is good to me. Anytime we're nervous, we're a little bit scared. Really, that's excitement that that is the next version of ourself trying to like nudge us into that direction. But fear, the lizard brain, scarcity mindset, our brain only can measure what we could lose. So, you know, it's keeping you safe. So this week, guess who gets to be on clubhouse with me if you're able to swing it. Oh, but by the fact of just like doing these things that are uncomfortable, it normalizes it. And that's, it just becomes routines and rituals. So at the end of the day, if you feel compelled to create and talk toward a specific topic, especially if it's super vulnerable, but you have something to share, especially in this groovy awakening. I think this is the time to really like lean into this. To me, clearly your gut is telling you something. And the fact that some people may not dig it and are turned off to it is just a part of the process. Like, as I say, you can't make everyone happy. You are not pizza. There's going to be people that hate us. There's going to be people that hate our work. That's just, that's a part of the game. You know what? We need to get used to it, man. Sorry. I'm like sick getting through this on this call today, but Every time we play it safe, we rob ourselves and that perfect person who our work is for, we rob them of something they would have vibed to or found lots of value in. So every time we're scared to like show up and be our true selves in our work and just like hit post and share something, we get too lost of comparison, the fear of judgment, even the fear of success. Those are the big, the, the big three fears. We rob not only our current self of growth, but our future self of growth. And then we rob that perfect person who that work was for. So I'm hoping to challenge each and every one of you, especially you, if this was one of them. Confidence comes from the act of doing consistently. And just know every time you're like scared, really, that means you're excited. And every time we give into that inner critic, what we're really doing is robbing ourselves of someone else. Totally. Yeah, I think definitely um, up until this point, just consistently posting. um, That's also one of my biggest wins is Mm. I haven't created like five or six pieces of art, like consistently each week. I don't think ever. I've always spaced it out probably like one month or (laughs) like I just, yeah. So that's a huge win for me. And just being consistent and doing it for the last six weeks um, per week, that alone just like keeps fueling my confidence too, because I'm just, I'm getting more used to it. And I think that is a huge part of it. Just like getting in the habit and then I kind of just get rid of that stigma of like, oh my gosh, I'm making a post. I'm spilling my guts right now. Like, you know, so that is, yeah, a huge, just building that habit. That's exactly it. Like habits, routines, and rituals. If anybody wants to be successful with their side hustle and potentially take it full time one day, everything you just said there on top of wins that you've had in terms of creating boundaries with your day job, that's been huge. Finding what time of the day, like for me, I'm very, very structured on my carving out time for me, my pockets of time in the day, but it may not work for everyone that way, but at least you're finding like a system that works for you. It seems to really, really uh, working for you. And well, one more thing I want to say something else that's valuable on a week, you didn't have anything to post. You were in between two projects. What did you do to stay consistent? Yes. Um, 
So you gave me the great idea of uh, repurposing an old um, an old piece that I did. And to me, that was kind of like an eye opener because I tend to create something and then I just put it out there and that's it. I'm like, okay, well, I guess for now it just kind of stays in the ether. Maybe it will land on my website at some point, but I kind of just see it like if it's done, it's done. Like nobody wants to see it again. It's like people are going to know that I already posted it. So I'm being an imposter by reposting another one of my pieces. <laughs> so um, it was like pretty cool to get to revisit this piece because it was about two years ago that I had created it initially. And just creating it two years later, I'm like, I noticed so much about my growth and my skill set and just like my own uh, thought process behind that piece too. And it just like really resonated two years later as well. And, you know, I think there was a lot of value to share with that as well as value for me to like revisit the piece. So yeah, that was cool. Definitely going to do that more. (laughs) Definitely. And I want to encourage all of us and whoever's listening to, and before we move on, I just want to say the reason why it's okay to like remix repurpose or Frankenstein past work into current work. One There's no way in hell or uh, Instagram is letting your entire audience see your work in the first place. So something you posted months ago, I guarantee your entire audience did not see it. Two, no one is going to be creepy enough that they're going to go all the way back in your feed and notice like, oh my God, Christina posted that six months ago, a year ago, two years ago. No one's going to be that creepy. I've repurposed remixed stuff so many times and nobody's ever said a damn thing in my like seven years of consistently posting weekly and repurposing things. So nobody's ever going to say anything. So hopefully that's like a mindset shift for a lot of us. If we're having a crazy week coming up or you have a vacation or like Isaac, whose wife was expecting, you know, he might be missing some time. You could go and replay your greatest hits like Pink Floyd. You think they only played their one time hit one time, you know, like, no, it's called playing your best hits. So yes, hopefully that was like a big eye opener for you and others. Totally. Thank you so much, Scotty. Yes, you're doing fantastic. The small ego, everyone. Thanks again for listening. It'd be awesome if you took the time to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and let the comment below so we can connect. Again, if you want to catch a shout out as a future listener of the week, make sure you subscribe to the show on iTunes and give it a rating and review.